Here comes Santa Claus. While we were on our out west summer trip, we boondocked for a week in Custer, South Dakota, close to a lot of fun activities. We camped out on North Pole Road. If you think this looks like a beautiful area, you may want to boondock here too. We're Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels, and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full-time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy-duty truck Leroy, our two k motorcycles, our DRV Dixie, and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. You may have seen a previous video that I posted about an unsafe campsite in Orville, South Dakota. We wanted to stay there because it was really close to Mount Rushmore, Iron Mountain Road, Needles Highway, Custer State Park and Crazy Horse, but since that didn't work out, Mark and Jen came to the rescue as they were boondocking out in South Dakota, and we joined up with them where you see the little yellow circle. They came to our rescue and we had a great time with them. The road to the boondocking area was about 10 miles from where we were at. It was a bit of a ride going down the road, but it was graded very nicely and it was wide enough and it was actually pretty dry. Hang on to your seats because we're going to speed through this. Crazy Horse with Jen and Mark. We're at Crazy Horse and they have a big parking lot just for bikes. If you look at the top there, you can see the side view Crazy Horse. Following the discovery of gold in the Black Hills and the U.S. government's backing of white explorers in the territory, the War Department ordered all Dakota under reservations. Crazy Horse and Chief Sitting Bull refused. On June 17, 1876, Crazy Horse led a force of 1,200 Oglala and Cheyenne warriors against General George Crook and his brigade, successfully turning back the soldiers as they attempted to advance towards Sitting Bull's encampment on the Little Bighorn River. A week later, Crazy Horse teamed up with Sitting Bull to decimate 
Lieutenant Colonel Custer and his esteemed 7th Cavalry in the Battle of the Little Bighorn, perhaps the greatest victory ever by Native Americans over U.S. troops. Following the death of Custer, the U.S. Army struck back hard against the Lakota. Crazy Horse continued to fight. But as the winter of 1877 set in and the food supplies began to shorten, Crazy Horse's followers started to abandon him. After his arrest, Crazy Horse was returned to Fort Robinson, where, in a struggle with the officers, he was bayoneted in the kidneys. He passed away with his father at his side on September 5, 1877. Years after his death, Crazy Horse still revered for being a visionary leader who fought hard to preserve his people's traditions and way of life. But well, fortunately, it won't be done in our lifetime, but it is quite amazing. Overall, in the round, it's 563 feet high and 641 feet long. Crazy Horse's face is 87 feet 6 inches high. That's nearly nine stories. The face was completed June 3, 1998, which was its 50th anniversary. As a comparison, the height of Mount Rushmore faces are 60 feet, and Crazy Horse is 563 feet. Pretty amazing. There is no timeline for when the monument should be completed. However, the hand, arm, shoulder, hairline, and top of the horse's head are estimated to be finished by 2037. Our next ride was on Iron Mountain Road. It's 17 miles long, has 314 curves, 14 switchbacks, three pigtails, three tunnels, two splits, and at the end is four presidents. Over a 14-year period between October 4, 1927 and October 31, 1941, Gutzum Borglum and 400 workers sculpted the colossal 60-foot-high carvings of United States Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln to represent the first 150 years of American history. These presidents were selected by Borglum because of their role of preserving the Republic and expanding its territory. Gutzun Bergelung spent much of the last two years of the project traveling and working to secure additional funding. While he was away, his son, Lincoln, supervised the work on Mount Rushmore. In March 1941, as a final dedication was being planned, Gutzun Bergelung died. This fact, along with the impending American involvement in World War II, led to the end of the work on the mountain. On October 31, 1941, Mount Rushmore National Memorial was declared a completed project. Therefore, you do not see the complete busts, just the heads. Our next bike ride was on Needles Highway. The 14-mile-long Needles Highway, part of Peter Norbeck Scenic Byway in the South Dakota Black Hills, is a spectacular drive through ponderosa pine and spruce forests, granite structures and mountains, and meadows surrounded by birch and aspen trees. 
The infamous Needles Eye Tunnel is only 8 foot 9 inches wide by 9 foot 8 inches high. Also, the Iron Creek Tunnel is 8 foot 9 inches wide by 10 foot 10 inches high. Technically, Needles Highway is a loop that connects the Mount Rushmore National Monument, the northern rim of Custer State Park, and the Sylvan Lake area. The highway has hundreds of feet of drops on the sides without safety barriers. The road's name comes from the needle-like granite formations which seem to pierce the horizon along the highway. Any way you look at it, the Needles Highway is undoubtedly one of the most outstanding drives in America. Needles Highway. There's a tunnel there. And the view is outstanding. If you are in this area, there was a not well-known place to visit that we enjoyed. It's called Mammoth Site, and it's about 35 miles south of Custer, South Dakota. The Mammoth Site is a museum and paleontological site near Hot Springs, South Dakota, in the Black Hills. It is an active excavation site at which research and excavations are continuing. The facility encloses a prehistoric sinkhole that formed and was slowly filled with sediments. The sedimentary fill of the sinkhole contains remains of fauna and flora preserved by entrapment and burial within a sinkhole. As of 2016, the remains of 61 mammoths, including 58 North American Columbian and three woolly mammoths, had been recovered. Mammoth bones were found at the site in 1974, and a museum and building enclosing the site were established. The museum now contains an extensive collection of mammoth remains. It's a very nice museum to visit, and you can take your phone with you and listen to information on each of the sites that they have marked. We also ran into Randy and Jean, which we had met at Quartzsite a couple years ago. They were just boondocking right down the road from us, and then we went into Custard to check it out. I mean, come on, this is awesome for boondocking or what? It's Sturgis week. This is in Custer, but they get a ton of traffic as well. They got their streets all marked off for the bikers. 
about uh, an hour and a half. It's actually Sturgis about an hour and a half from here. But apparently, Custer gets a lot of traffic too. We had to check out Mount Rushmore Brewing Company in the Pounding Father's Restaurant. Dave felt right at home there. The pizza and burgers were very good. We all went to the Purple Pie place and had ice cream. However, we did hear that they had great lunches, dinners, and excellent homemade pie. Another stop was at the pizza mill. It was a little pricey, but very good. Last but not least, we stopped by the Dakota Broasted Chicken and got some to go, and it too was very good. Thanks to those who had made those suggestions to us. You certainly get your lightning show out here. Thunder doesn't stop. Nah, thunder just keeps going and going and going. Ooh, hear that thunder? Mm hmm. That's called butt thunder. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.